Hey everybody, and welcome back to Erlengrot. It is early summer, and today we're going to be doing just a bunch of contracts for some local farmers. Pretty much got all our work caught up, uh, literally just waiting for the grass to grow and the crops to grow before we have anything really sizable to do. Now that we've got some local farmers out here that are in need of some assistance, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to be doing a combination of fertilizing and uh, we've got a little bit of bale work to do. Go ahead and collect that contract. Now we're going to do a contract on field 11. Field 11 is, that's what I thought. Now I've gone and purchased a field. I don't remember if we did that. I think we did that in the last episode where we sold off our pigs, right? So we've got a field now. And I wanted to show you some interesting stuff because now I've been able to take our first soil samples from that field. And it looks like fertilizing does does take effect. Let's go over here and take a look. So we've purchased field five and you can see it's got 200, um, 180 and 140 bands of fertilizer there. And they pretty much correspond with the three soil types of that particular field. I had done fertilizing contracts. I've done at least one fertilizing contract on that field before I bought it. So that kind of answers a question that I know some folks had. I kind of had too. Is, you know, are these fertilizing contracts really doing anything? And it does indeed seem like they are. So, I mean, they give us good money. But if we go and buy, you know, one of these fields, looks like we're going to be getting crop fairly well fertilized. So that'll be that'll be good to know. We're up to one hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, so we could could maybe even buy um, field six if we wanted to. Field seven, not so much. Eight, not so much. One, not so much. But yeah, we can probably pick up field six. If you wanted. And I've talked about maybe doing some harvest contracts because we had a fair bit of. Still do. We have a fair bit of wheat planted around, but. Weather is not going to be cooperating with us, I fear. So if we take a look here at our seasons menu, you can see we have the first day of possible harvest is mid-summer for our wheat. Take a look at our forecast. Today is mid-day two. We have two days of early summer left. Today and Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Rain. That is mid spring or mid summer. Go back here. So Sunday rain, Monday rain, Tuesday rain. So that's mid summer right there. Here's two days of late summer, sunny and rain again. So if we get rain all three days of mid summer, we are the AIs going to harvest those fields and not give us an opportunity to uh, pick up those contracts again. We had that happen last year. So that's why I think buying, buying this field here might be in our best favor. Go ahead and get that done.
Then when we get our fertilizing done, I think what we'll do is we'll go over there and uh, take some soil samples. We'll need to get our bent tractor. It's the only one that we have that can actually do um, narrow tires. And uh, we'll basically see what kind of soil we have underneath there. We've done fertilized contracts on that field. Also, so that should uh, should reveal some pretty good ground underneath. Um, I haven't done any lime application to adjust the pH of this field, and I'm not going to. Uh, from the standpoint of you, know, you wouldn't put lime on a field once a crop came up because you'd basically just burn the crop. So the window of opportunity to lime has passed. So we're, we're kind of stuck with the pH that we've got. And I'm pretty confident we're going to have really good nitrogen levels once we expose that field with soil testing. I'm going to take this guy over and get him started. Then we're going to jump over to our Fent. Like I say, go grab a soil tester. And, uh, well, testing field seven. Seven or six. The testing field six. And uh, see what lies underneath the soil. I might merge field five and six uh, just to make one larger field when we're done uh, with this particular harvest. Not really sure. We'll have to take a look and uh, decide on that a little bit later. But uh, go ahead and what we got going on here. Almost can get the whole thing. A little bit of overlap there. I know there's been a lot of talk, a lot of requests to make this sample size bigger, but you know what? You, for the few times you need to do this. And yes, if you have a huge field, and yes, if you want complete testing coverage, you're going to need to take a lot of samples. How's that any different than how long it's going to take to harvest? How long it's going to take to plant? Of course, you, know, you can always choose to use something big, big equipment. off the sample we will return this back to our shop and our tests have come back nine hundred dollars the 
Let's go get our helper started on the next fertilized contract. What kind of soil uh, we've been able to uh, pick up. Of course, he's way on the other end of the field. So, if we open this, we top this off now. Indeed, we can. Okay, that worked out pretty darn good. Let's take a look and see what kind of soil we've got. So we continue our bands of loam, sandy loam, and loamy sand. Kind of figure we would, but more importantly, how's our nitrogen? Look at that. Nitrogen is good. We're nearly 200 across the whole field. So that is excellent. If anything, it might be a little over nitrogenated, if that could possibly be a word or over nitrogenated on that field as a result of these harvest con or fertilized contracts let's get this soil tester returned get our tires swapped back out he blocked by Blocked by a car. Sometimes these helpers, I don't know how much smarter they really are if that building put down or not. And uh, once we're done fertilizing field nine, we are all set to take on a bailing contract on field 15. Now, what's important about this bailing contract is I've already done a bailing contract on field 15 after applying precision farming. It was the first contract that I did after precision farming. I did it probably off camera. I don't think I recorded it. Um, and we came out with something like 15 extra bales. That was a very good yield on that contract. It netted us a couple thousand extra dollars once those bales turned to silage. Because we definitely kept them around. So I wanted to do this bailing contract again and see what we got as far as yield this time around That's what we want. Go ahead and pick up this wrapper. 
This is a wrapper, second hand wrapper that we leased from the dealer. Gave us some special hot pink wrap. So we could wrap these bales with that. Uh, and then we would basically know, without a shadow of a doubt, where these bales came from. Mark that here, and at this point, really, it's a waiting game. You uh, wait until this guy's done. Can't do anything. He's done. He nearly is done. Uh, let's take a look at the yield before we mess it up. Had here on 15. So we had a yield of... 65% last time we mowed this field. It's not owned by us, so we didn't take any soil samples. So we really don't know where the pH or nitrogen levels are. And I'll be really interested to see what kind of yield we get after a second mowing on that field. All right, well, I think this experiment is going to tell us we should see the exact same yield we saw before uh, because I am the color is not changing on the field from the last time we did this to now. Over here we got 65%. We're getting 65% again. Can't click on the field like we can on an owned field to see the economic analysis, but uh, it's kind of interesting. I was thinking maybe we would see a lower yield. Since typically you don't see fertilized contracts for grass fields. This field's effectively not been fertilized uh, since we took grass off of it last time. We get out here and check. We don't have any information related to the nitrogen state or pH state for this particular field. Now, I do have some interesting information up here on field six. Remember field six, we looked and we've got really good nitrogen over almost most of the field. Problem is, Wheat does not want nitrogen at 200 in sandy loam or loamy sand. Uh, wheat will take the nitrogen level of 200 in loam, but loam only. So in the sandy loam, our pH is actually flagged as bad. In loamy sand, our pH is flagged as okay. And then we're perfect over here. So it'll be interesting come harvest. See, do we get a lower yield over here because we've over pH'd or over nitrogenated, uh, nitrogenated, over fertilized that particular field, part of the field versus here. We have a more optimal level. And then of course our pH levels are off for that particular ground anyway. So we'll see what kind of yield we get with non-optimal pH levels and non-optimal nitrogen levels. And this is just gonna be pretty much More of the same. Now we're going to mow it. And then we got our windrower. 
We've got our baler. We need to bring over here. Bail this up. We're going to use the cloths. Or not the cloths, but the, um, the crone baler from the straw harvest pack. Uh, we're going to use up that baler until we don't have any more net wrap. Then we're going to get rid of that. And I'm going to pick up, I think we're going to go with the cloths round baler. Um, I don't know if we're going to go with that. Or if we're going to shift over to square bales. You know. I don't know. I think it's a pretty big shift to shift over to square bales. Because we have all of those round bales stored up. I think we're going to have some amount of gra or, um, straw still. Uh, when it comes time to harvest our wheat. This field, field 5 and 6, is going to be ready sooner than our other fields. 5 and 6, ready to go. Um, well, I guess field 2 and 25 is caught up. You notice we have a little, little failed to germinate going on here. Failed germination. A little withered crop. Oh, and we're out of fuel. Yeah, I run this thing out of fuel so many times. So many times I get this thing out of fuel. Because it stores so little fuel uh, for its horsepower. I mean, the Fent over there can go so so much longer on fuel uh, refilling it costs a lot more this one yeah doesn't hold a lot of fuel i have to say the windrows look really good they look nice and full so hopefully we're going to get a good yield off of the baler so very very shortly Lots of nice, nice wind rows here. I have to say the little TT281 Plus or whatever this thing is, oh, it has been a great, great at wind rowing. Not showing any signs of uh, of distress or being overworked. Good, but yeah, we've got pretty nice sized windrows to work with. Let's see how our bailing yield has turned out. Yield's been pretty good. We are sitting at. 36 bales, 37 bales at this point. We had 301 bales off of our fields. Bale counter wasn't reset. Kind of forgot to do that. Let's take one off the number and drop to 300. 38 bales. Got one full around. On this field to do and then just this pass down the end and the bottom and getting three to four bales per pass it just depends on where the last bale ejected and how much was in the chamber when we turned around
I have to say, this Baylor in general is a little weird. I mean, take a launch. It doesn't eject completely, it just boom. Spit pops the bale. The animation of the bale coming out isn't isn't clean at all. Baylor operated a lot better in 17. If I'm remembering correctly. Just finish up this and uh, we get to wrap it in our hot pink, our hot pink wrap. At this point, we're at 43 bales. I think we're going to get about 50, uh, 52 bales off of this field. Just have to see should be enough to satisfy the contract and then some I hope well wrapping is done and we have a field of 50 hot pink mileage wrapped bales so this should be more than enough to satisfy this contract see what percent we are at after we drop off this load of 24. I have to say I'm really liking this bale wrap. I might just uh, do hot pink bales from this point forward. Anytime I wrap bales, hot pink for the win. FTW. So it looks like we did pretty darn good with our yield. Not even our yield. It's not our field. Uh, the AI has done really good with the yield. Of course, we don't know anything about if the AI has applied fertilizer to this field or lime to this field since we uh, mowed it last autumn. And we got the same 65% yield off of this harvest. 50 bales have got two full trailer loads and then two bales left over. So ideally we're going to have, well we should be, we're going to have none left over. Be pretty darn near 50%. And we drop this off. But I've got a feeling we're going to be closer to 75%. 70%. My guess. What do you all guess? Put it in the comments below before the video is over. What do you guess we're going to need to satisfy this contract? Really looking forward to uh, seeing how these wheat fields harvest. See what they give us up. And, you know, with all this rain, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to do a second cut of grass. It's going to be raining. All of uh, midsummer, so I guess we could do a second cut midsummer and put that straight into the fermenter. In reality, the fermenter is still pretty well full, so we don't really need to top it off too much. Where are we at? Where are we at? Seventeen, twenty-six, thirty-five, forty-four, fifty-three. 
63, 71, 71 percent. All right, so that leaves us a little over a quarter. So 24 bales, half of that is 12. So we probably need, oh gosh, 15 bales. Will that maybe satisfy this contract? 12, 13, 14, 15. The 12 bales would be 25%. And we need 28%. So we probably only need 13 bales. 14 bales at the the outset. That means the rest of the bales are free money. All right, let's go collect 14, see if we can't push it over the top. Love to do some contracts, AI harvest contracts, but that rain, I don't think I'm going to have an opportunity to. But it's probably just like last year. AI is going to magically be able to harvest their fields in the rain. Whereas we wouldn't be able to accept the contract and do it in the rain. I think the AI should have just as much chance of losing prop as we should. Go up to 13. So I was going to do 14. That works. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12 more bales on field. A little lower yield. I'm pretty sure I had 15. Um, last time. Still nothing, nothing to shake a stick at because you can get a couple hundred dollars silage bale. That's a couple thousand dollars over and above the uh, the contracted uh, 18 grand. That we're going to make off of this contract, so it's going to put us push us over twenty thousand dollars for what you know. In all reality, is probably been about I don't know two hours work.
be. Let's see. That was pretty right on the money. That's seventy percent last time. Ninety-eight percent. Done. Those two bales there. Uh, Twelve. Fourteen bales. Right on the money again. Fifteen. We probably lost a bale or two in that whole transaction. But I'm a little little superstitious. I'm not going to collect the money for this contract until I get all the bales collected and off the field. Just in case, although I don't think it happens. Just in case they vanish. Guys, I hope you liked this episode. It was a little bit different. We were doing contract work for the most part during early summer because all of our farm work is done. We're just waiting for the grass to grow. Put another coat of slurry on it. Uh, before we do go, though, I want to catch you up as to where we are with our cow count. Still have 150 milkers, and most of them are providing us milk at this point. And we have 125 calves. Last time I counted, I think we had about 10 or 11 um, male bulls. So we'll be growing them to one years of age and then selling them next spring. And then the rest here are females we will be keeping and ev eventually uh, putting them over in their own um, pasture. Got another calf. Another female just born. Look through here. We'll see next in on 0.6, 1, and then all these that are basically dash. They've already given birth. 6.7. Their number have already given birth because well we have 125. So until next time, guys, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.